Hey, I'm just going to come out and say this. I think that Arch Linux sucks. And I know a lot of you in the comments are probably going to kill me right now. You're going to go, come on, this Al guy, he's a total jerk. Well, fine. But here's my thoughts on this. And I haven't even installed Arch Linux. I've installed a few sort of variants of Arch Linux in the past. But here's why I think it sucks. And again, this is only my own world. Uh, everybody's got different needs. And that's fine. But I used to be a Linux sysadmin a million years ago. And my life with Linux started in the late 1990s. And I started off with things like Slackware, where... I actually had to compile my own kernel, or at least compile modules and get everything working. And I used to have to write M4 things for SendMail. It was real tough back in those days, let me assure you. So I kind of grew out of that and I thought, hmm, that's, that's cool, but Linux has evolved. In fact, computing as, as a general has evolved. You know, even Windows is a lot easier to use now than what it was back in Windows 95, 98 days. But if we think about it, whenever you use a computer, and this is not true for absolutely everybody, but when you use a computer, generally speaking, you just want to use it for, well, doing work or creating or having fun. You don't want to really find yourself sitting there configuring things all the time. And I know sometimes there can be an element of fun in that. But realistically, to install Arch Linux, I'm going to have to sit down and read this. And that's just crazy. And so what I see here before me, I'm in a virtual box environment, by the way is the install system. So all I've done is I've started up the ISO for Arch. This is the latest 2024 installation. I have just installed, I've just started the install. And what I'm seeing right here is the welcome screen, if you will. This looks like something out of 1998 from back in the day when I used Slackware. In fact, it's actually worse because in Slackware, if my very hazy memory reminds me, it had a TUI, a text user interface, a blue sort of screen with grey prompts, and it would say, hey, welcome to the Slackware installer. And it would kind of guide me through doing certain things like setting up a hard drive partition and things like that. If you go right back to the very beginning of Linux in the early 1990s, I remember that uh, you'd have to literally compile the kernel, run fdisk to partition your drive, do a whole lot of manual stuff. And that's because basically there were no distributions, kinda. Uh, you had to do it all manually. If I look at the installation guide here, there's a heck of a lot of stuff that I have to do manually. Like I have to fdisk the drive. I have to create a network link. I have to do blooming everything. Why would anybody in their right mind in 2024 want to do this? Why wouldn't you just get an installation system that says, welcome to blah blah Linux, press next to get started. And it would guide you through the process of installing your operating system. Pretty much like every single other operating system in the world. The most user-friendly of operating systems do it, and even some of the least user-friendly operating systems still follow that general convention. It's been such a long time since I've even had to think about doing this sort of stuff. Now, most Arch Linux users are probably going to argue here and say, ah, but it, it teaches you all the stuff about operating systems. Ah, but it runs really fast because you optimize absolutely everything to the nth degree because you're configuring it just the way you want to run it. And, oh, it, it, it's got all these zip zap features that you can customize exactly the way that you want them. But why? <laughs> My time is finite on this earth, and I only have so many hours to the day I die, and I have to work 
to live, to literally put the roof over my head, to put the food in my belly. And all of those hours that I'd have to use to follow these instructions to set up Arch Linux on my machine, I'm just wondering, why would I do that? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. So I have switched on my Arch Linux installer, which there isn't one. It looks like I'm just literally at a prompt. And now I'm dumped at a command prompt and it's telling me that I have to read the installation guide. This is wild. So I have to get my live environment set up to the point where I can set up a console with key maps and set up the terminal and verify the boot mode and connect to the internet. And, and that's just step 1.7. I mean, like, what's going on, man? <laughs> it's just insane. That this is literally the stuff I did in the 1990s. This is a modern Linux operating system. So please tell me in the comments below, why would I want to do this? I just don't see the point. So thanks for watching. That's all. This has been Al on Al's Geek Lab. I'll see you in the next video.